Have you ever found something that you weren't even looking for and it turned out to be awesome? Well, today I'm going to tell you a story about two times when that happened and how it revealed one of the most beautiful natural spaces on planet Earth. Oh, and by the way, most people will never see this space in person because trying to see it in person could kill you. I'm talking about the Cave of Crystals. It's about 98 by 33 feet long and it's packed wall to wall with gigantic, long, beautiful selenite crystals. Imagine a giant tree. Now take that tree and put it in your living room at a really weird angle. Most of these crystals measure between 13 and 19 feet long, but the largest ones are around 39 feet long and 13 feet thick. This is what I imagine people find on different planets. But how did this cave get here? How did humans find it? And how does it kill people? Here's the story. There's this mountain in Chihuahua, Mexico called Sierra de Nica. Around 1794, prospectors found silver, lead, zinc, and gold in the mountain. When precious minerals like silver, lead, zinc, and gold are found anywhere on planet Earth, it tends to attract humans that want to extract those minerals from the Earth. Enter Peñoles Mining Company. Founded in 1887, it is the second largest mining company in Mexico, specializing in gold, zinc, lead, and silver. In 1910, Peñola's mining company was extracting silver, and when they got to about 394 feet below the surface, they came across this cave with walls completely lined in selenite crystals. Selenite crystals are these colorless transparent crystals made of this naturally occurring mineral called gypsum. The sheer number of crystals in this photo is unbelievable, and seeing how tight it is when you actually see other people in the cave just makes it that much more amazing. Imagine walking through a narrow tunnel and wall to wall, everywhere you look, you have these jagged three feet crystals pointing directly at you. They named this cave, the Cave of Swords. Now clearly the crystals in the Cave of Swords are much smaller than the gigantic tree-sized crystals in the Cave of Crystals, but they were made through the same process. And understanding how the Cave of Swords form will help us understand why trying to see the Cave of Crystals in person could kill you. So here's how they were formed. The Earth has many layers, from its inner hot core to the cool outer layer called the lithosphere. The lithosphere is broken up into many giant pieces called tectonic plates. These things are huge. I mean, entire continents sit on top of these plates. And when they shift, which they do regularly, they cause earthquakes, form mountains, create volcanoes, you know, little things like that. The locations where these giant plates slide past one another are called faults. And sometimes faults are so small that you barely notice them. And sometimes they're so large, like the San Andreas Fault, that you can see them from space. Remember that mountain in Chihuahua, Mexico that I mentioned earlier, Sierra de Nica? That's where they found the silver, and that's where Peñola's mining company was digging when they found the Cave of Swords? Well, Sierra de Nica was actually formed 26 million years ago when magma from the Earth's core pushed upwards and started moving to the Earth's surface through a fault line. But this process didn't just create the mountain. It turns out there's a limestone cavity right below the mountain that had been filling up with groundwater for many, many years. This groundwater contained a mineral called anhydrite. Now, anhydrite is stable at 136 degrees Fahrenheit, but anywhere below that, it starts to break down and reform as gypsum. So remember how I said that the magma from the core of the earth pushing upwards towards the fault line is what created the mountain? That magma didn't just create the mountain, it also heated up the groundwater in that limestone cavity and kept the anhydrite in it pretty stable. But eventually, temperatures dipped, and that anhydrite started to reform as gypsum. And that gypsum started to form into well-developed crystals called selenite, thus creating the Cave of Swords. So we've got that down. But why is it that the crystals in the Cave of Swords are so much smaller than the crystals in the Cave of Crystals? Well, the short answer is temperature. The Cave of Swords was discovered by the Peñoles Mining Company in 1910, about 394 feet below the surface. Fast forward to the year 2000, 950 feet below the surface, they discovered the gargantuan Cave of Crystals. 
So the cave of crystals with the gigantic crystals in it actually cooled at a slower rate, allowing the selenite crystals to form and become far more developed. I wanna stop for a second and appreciate exactly how long it took for this cooling to help form these crystals. So a 2011 study suggested that it would take anywhere between 500,000 and 900,000 years for a selenite crystal to get to three feet thick. And you have crystals in the cave of crystals that are 13 feet thick. So how can this cave kill you? Well, you might already have an idea of the answer based on what I just told you. It's the temperature. The temperatures that allowed these selenite crystals to form this large in the first place are really unsafe for the human body. Temperatures in the cave of crystals can get up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit, and the humidity level can reach 100%. Being inside the cave of crystals for too long can cause all sorts of problems for the human body, including causing the liquid to condense inside your lungs, and that could kill you. I can't even imagine what 100% humidity feels like. That's why when you see pictures of scientists in the cave of crystals, they're always wearing these specially designed cooling suits and these respirators that provide them with chilled air. And scientists have been able to learn a lot about crystal formation just by studying these two caves. An astrobiologist from NASA named Penelope Boston helped discover microbial life forms that had been suspended in the crystals and laying dormant for what they believe to be about 50,000 years. And like in the beginning of many science fiction movies, she took fluid samples back to the lab and attempted to wake them up. And she did so successfully. Turns out they're unlike anything else on planet Earth. The only thing similar to these life forms are the life forms that are found in volcanoes. Learning more about how life can exist in these conditions could help scientists understand how life can exist on different planets. Unfortunately, the mining process that led to the discovery of these caves in the first place required that water be pumped out of the caves. So you had these giant crystals that had been thriving and growing for many, many, many years underwater, now exposed to the open air. And they stayed exposed to the open air for about 20 years, which scientists believe has actually damaged the integrity of the crystals. Thankfully, Peñola's mining company finally pumped water back into the cave to see if it would help the crystals start to grow again. So you can't see the cave of crystals in person, but you can see some samples of the crystals at the Harvard Museum of Natural History and the Astro Gallery in New York City. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed that story and I will see you outside.